there's been a lot of news in the press now about driverless cars. And I was very interested to learn that the biggest profession in the US today is uh, truck drivers. Now, as we move into this technological future where we, it looks like we're heading down a path of driverless vehicles, trucks, cars, taxis, Ubers, um, that's going to have a huge societal impact, isn't it? If that number one occupation is completely wiped out by driverless vehicles, what kind of impact is this technology going to have on society, do you feel? Yeah. So um, the, the major technology fueling this shift uh, to the driverless cars and driverless trucks is, is artificial intelligence, AI. There are many different species of artificial intelligence. Uh, there's not a single, uh, single type. There's many varieties. And the important thing about this is that all those different types think differently than humans do. The whole point of having a, an AI driver car is that it doesn't drive like you doesn't, or me. It doesn't drive like a human. It's not distracted. It's not worrying about whether it left something on the stove. It's going an engineer to, to only focus on driving. And so therefore, they're going to drive better than us. And um, the, 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 all these different types of, of thinking um, – uh, will be used for different things and optimized for different parts. And the AI that we'll ha have in these cars will be good, which um, will spark hundreds of new industries themselves. Because, because we aren't driving the cars, uh, what are we going to do in the cars? Well, most likely we're going to do virtual reality. We're going to put it on headsets inside the car and, and we'll work or we'll be entertained. That's why a lot of people think that Apple's going to become a car company because uh, what you, the stuff that you're going to do inside the car, the Apple car, would be all the Apple products. You'd be entertaining, doing work, uh, experiencing things. Mm. And so these sophisticated machines – uh, that actually have to cross the country are going to need uh, the, to, so the three million long haul truck drivers will become people who maybe repair these things, which are going to be, you know, they're they're mechanical. They're mechanical things that need a lot of care and tender attention that are far complex than what we have right now, um, and. Uh, that's just one example of the kinds of new things that we will need by the fact that we have a new kind of intelligence making new desires that we didn't even know that we had before. So if you can imagine auto-driven cars, the question is, and all these people inside, it's where would they go? What would they do? Would they have meetings? Will they, would they have parties? Would they, um, would they uh, spend overnight there? I mean, uh, if, if you don't have to drive, why not sleep in them? Right, so you could just you'd have these vehicles that that became uh, people could sleep on the way home instead of uh, um, coming to their house. Uh, right. there, there, there are so many new things that would this would unleash um, that uh, the total sum of this is going to be, exceed the numbers of the three million jobs that are lost, and these jobs are not just all. Uh, requiring PhDs. This is not just all conceptual work. The things that humans, uh, our jobs are usually bundles of different tasks. And some of those tasks are repetitive and monotonous. And those are the kinds of things that can be defined in terms of efficiency or productivity. Those are the things that go to the bots. Mm -hmm. The things that humans will retreat to and move to are the things that are not defined by efficiency. And that's like uh, innovation, trying things. Uh, where which is inherently inefficient. So I mean, science is inefficient. Innovation is inefficient because you're doing one fa failure after another. You're trying stuff that doesn't work. You're exploring. You're you're coming to dead ends. That's hugely inefficient. That's what humans are good at. They're, we're good at wasting time, basically. And human relationships are inherently inefficient. So we're good at human relationships, and that's something that. Any, anybody who's a human can do. And so uh, being at the bedside of somebody who's sick, that's inefficient. But that's also something that we find very valuable. 
So we are going to move to those kinds of jobs that are not defined by productivity. Those, those tasks. So, th- so a lot of the jobs are not just replaced. They're actually just kind of refined. Right. In the sense that the parts of it that are efficient and measured by efficiency move to the bots and the other parts of it, the executive function, you know, I mean, like Peter Drucker talks about the two parts of jobs, the jobs that where you want to do it right and the other part where you want to do the right job. That doing the right job is an executive choice. That becomes more and more our role. Of, if if the, doing the job is right, that's what we give to the bots. Doing the right job is something that we take on. Sure, but let me ask you a personal question. Is there one element of the future that even though logically you can argue, yes, that's a positive thing. 